Hi, good morning. I'll be doing my best to avoid this uh, last slide that uh, hopefully I will not see. Okay, so my name is Jérôme Fleury. I work with Bureau Veritas here in Singapore. I'm in charge of uh, uh, everything digital and everything innovation. Um, I will have a few slides to share with you today on, on the definition and the, the raising the awareness of the audience on uh, cyber risks in our uh, smart shipping and autonomous shipping world. Uh, first, if we try to qualify uh, cyber incidents, we can see two opportunities for such uh, events to happen. Uh, the first one would be uh, what I show on the bottom left, uh, the occurrence of a, a cyber safety incident where systems, um, uh, software, and, uh, and human uh, interact, and, and poor human competency um, crosses the way of, uh, of poorly uh, managed systems and, uh, and, equipment, uh, and, and equipment protection. On the right, uh, that would lead to the occurrence of cyber crimes and uh, hacks or uh, intrusion. The asset will be identified as a, as a target and will be um, voluntarily accessed by an authorized person. And even though the protection might be in place, the vulnerability of this protection is something that you, that you want to, to avoid uh, also, to, to avoid. Uh, so is the maritime industry um, really exposed to cyber incident or cyber threat? First, for, uh, sorry, I forgot. I will have one slide only on cyber safety. The rest of the presentation will focus on cyber security, so hacking and intrusions. Uh, I'd like to review a few um, uh, cases with you. The first one is that uh, cyber safety incident. It happened in 2013 in the Gulf of Mexico, and some unaware or, or not well cyber educated personnel downloaded some med media files uh, from home, load that on a thumb drive, bring it uh, during mobilization on board the mobile offshore drilling unit. In the cabin, wanted to watch a movie or listen to some music, plug the thumb drive in the, in the computer. And the day after, when resuming work, a malware that had been loaded during the download hit the module uh, network, disabled the signal sent to the, to the DP system, leading to the module to drift off-site and uh, causing an emergency shutdown of the well, so direct implication on the operation. The, 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 the root cause analysis here is definitely lack of awareness from the staff. And even though the incident happened in 2013, a report published last year, um, a, a survey still sees more than 41% of, uh, of uh, shipping uh, companies' personnel place the responsibility of cybersecurity on the shoulders of the master and, and obviously not uh, to be shared by everyone in the organization. The next slide um, with a few cyber security incidents uh, and the first one worth noticing is we, we all know well about is the Maersk incident in 2017 where they were hit by a ransomware um, leading them to being unable to release the cargo for their, for their, for their container ships. So, the, the ship safety was not impacted per se, but all the paperwork related to the um, uh, cargo um, logistics was impacted and uh, they were not able to release the containers in the terminals. Uh, Maersk has communicated, communicated quite openly on that incident and their estimation is that they incurred a three million, $300 million loss. They had to uh, flash more than 4,000 servers, almost 50,000 computers, and 2,500 applications need to be reinstalled on, on their systems. The next one is uh, Costco, which was hit by a ransomware in July 2018. They were uh, quicker to respond than Maersk was, probably because they benefit from the experience of the Maersk incident. And they had to shut down, they, 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 they were hit, sorry, by this uh, ransomware at their uh, long, port of Long Beach. And within two days, the ransomware had spread to their UK, Turkey, Canada, and other countries. They had to shut down all their communication system in all these countries. And they had to run their operation using Google and Yahoo accounts in order to um, keep the process, keep the business going on. 
these two in, these two hacks were definitely for profits. They were uh, ransomware, so the the attacker had a financial objective when hitting these two companies. Uh, the next two are not financial. In 2018, um, um, malware was targeted to the Schneider Electric uh, safety integrated systems, safety instrumental uh, instrumented systems. They are very specific systems, and they were specifically targeted by that uh, by that malware. Hopefully, all the implementation of that system is very uh, asset specific, so the impact was quite limited. The incident is worth noticing, though, because the objective here was not financial. It was um, the objective was to cause some damage, so we can relate that to terrorism or such uh, such activities. The last one, and the most recent, is the Stena Impero. Stena Impero was detained by Iranian authorities for wandering into their, uh, into their uh, territorial waters. Uh, it has been analyzed that the vessel had received some spoof uh, GPS signal coming from Iran, causing the vessel to enter uh, involuntarily uh, the, the Iranian waters. So here again, the motive is not, is not uh, financial, it's uh, purely political. So is my team really exposed? We, we reviewed a few incidents uh, that happened, but are, are they representative of what's happening? Um, DHL published on a yearly basis a resilience report, and in their 2018 edition, they cite the U.S. National Counterintelligence and Security Agency that declared 2017 a watershed in terms of uh, cybersecurity incidents, uh, with an, an increase of 400% of the number of incidents reported. And more than half of the organization worldwide are uh, reportedly targets of, of uh, such, uh, such attacks. Uh, you can see on the right that uh, more than half it's even worse than that in our region of the world, with more than 70% of the industrial control systems in Southeast Asia being, on a yearly basis, the target of uh, cyber attacks. And cybercrime has become a real business model. It's not only ransomware, but it's also uh, crypto mining. And crypto mining only has generated $2.5 billion revenue for the, for the hackers only in the first half of 2018. So is a ship really a target? Uh, yeah, I would say yes. The design life for the ship is 25 years, and the average age for a vessel today is in the 10 to 15 years. So that puts the ship and all its operating system in a design which is uh, uh, basically based on Windows NT, the support of which has ceased in, 28, in 2014. And they are exposed to connections coming from 2019 environments, software, network connections, systems, platforms, and whatsoever. And even though everybody is interested in the cyber performance of, of these systems with the objective of improving safety, uh, uh, reducing the uh, environmental impact, or uh, improving the, the OPEX and the fleet optimization, um, the process that are being used to achieve that are definitely 2019 technology. They are applied to 2010 uh, ship design and operating system. So definitely the cyber performance that we see as the target and where the return of investment is expected strongly relies and depends on cyber safety and cyber security. And this is sometimes a bit overlooked when investment decisions are made. Uh, if there's no immediate return of investment, one can seek uh, support into the regulatory um, compliance. And there are regulatory bodies uh, issuing guidelines and recommendations in terms of cybersecurity. But as it was pretty obvious uh, from, the, from the panels this morning, uh, cybersecurity is a concern, but they have bigger concerns coming. Uh, IMO 2020, for example even though uh, cybersecurity might be, con might be discussed in 2021 or even later. Now, what can be the motivation, the motive for a hacker to penetrate a vessel system? Uh, we saw, of course, the financial incentives. Um, the Iranian situation uh, highlights also the political reasons. Uh, the, the picture I show on the left is to illustrate that um, uh, eco-terrorism can be also uh, considered at a certain point, and lots of information in man is manipulated, and shipping does not always have a, 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 a good role on, uh, in that. 
being able to prevent uh, intrusion or to, to, to detect, prevent, or avoid intrusion is one thing. But uh, the vocabulary which is being used by Ajax and by other body is uh, resilience. It's not only about being protected, it's only about having a, a, a recovery plan and something in place in case something happens. And that's a, a tricky game where, where the more you get protections in place, the, the more um, you become a trophy in the eyes of a potential intruder. So the more you protect, the more you become a threat, uh, at risk, and that's a... Uh, um, a chicken and egg problem, where, where do you start? So you have to be ready to recover when something happens, because eventually something will happen. Uh, uh, this regulation body, and, and I, will, I will mention Ajax uh, only, to be quick, yeah, um, have issued recommendations for, to help ship owners and ship managers prevent uh, cyber events. So these recommendations range from the uh, establishment of uh, software inventory, management of software and system upgrade, um, secu physical security of the local controls, and of course, having uh, local control when the, when the systems are, are connected uh, remotely. And also, um, in the light of the previous slide, of course, contingency plans on board available to recover anything, anything happening when the ship is uh, out of reach for remote connections. My last slide, um, BV has, in order to help ship owners and ship operators, BV has developed a self-assessment platform where it's basically a questionnaire uh, that, that we propose to the industry that will help anybody connecting to it um, having a, a, an understanding or at least document his, his understanding of, the, of his own organization in terms of uh, cybersecurity and cybersecurity reliance. Resilience. And that will be it for me. Thank you very much. Thank you.